lovely soft plant here growing on the beach. This is the one that is going to get kissed by the frost. Lovely mild winter this year, so this one's still apparent. Get down in there again, look for the luscious, really small leaves. And this plant's mallow, common mallow. It's going to have lovely sprays of pink flowers later on in the year. But this time of year, it's got these kind of lily pad shaped leaves to them there with the stem. And it's regarded as what they call a demulcent plant, this one. It has a soothing, soft action on the body. It's quite um, mucilaginous, um, jelly-like. I was going to say snot there, but then again, I've said it now. Um, it's not snotty. It's quite jelly-like and soft. It's demulcent, mucilaginous. When you break it up in your hands, okay, it's going to go quite sort of loose. And there it goes, starts to go kind of nice and, not slimy, but it's... Uh, Definitely very silky, it'd be a better word to describe that. So common mallow, um, it's one of the lung herbs. It's gonna be very soothing on the chest, but as a food, it's slightly thickened sauces and stocks. So it could be put into a really lightly cooked soup or a really lightly cooked stock. And it's gonna give it some sort of body there. It's not gonna thicken it up loads, but it's gonna give it some sort of body and it can be put into things like partially cooked soup or lightly cooked stuff, um, cold soups like gazpacho, etc. So common mallow. Really nice delicate plant, but this one will disappear when you have the harsh frosts in winter. So this is plant we've just found here, grown deep into the shingle on the beach, next to this plant here, which is a teasel. I'm not interested in this one. This is spiny and prickly. This is cabbagey looking leaves here, which are really battered, bruised and overdone. It's a really mild winter, so they're still showing. These should have been dwindled away by now. But underneath the ground here is one of the most amazing calorific roots that you're ever going to find growing along the coast. It was reputed to be responsible for the first coastal migrators. I think it was Gordon Hillier who used to do Ray Mears' programmes. I'm sure I've seen it on one of his programmes. And there's this root section here that we're after. I'm just going to use my digging stone again, we don't ever use our fingers. And there you go, you can see underneath the grain there, it's got this root system. And that will spread right out through the shingle and you can follow it. When you're collecting the roots, just like when you're collecting the leaves, you want to look for nice clean examples with no maggot going through to it. Make sure the roots are nice and white. And again, if you can leave some of the roots in there, do. Don't take all of the plant when you find it. Make sure you leave half of the root system in there and that will regrow next year. So I'm not going to dig this one up anyway because it's just on its own. It was quite a rare find. But just to show you, this plant here, sea kale, has lovely white flowers in the middle of summer. Start of spring, um, which isn't going to be too long unless we have a really cold snap. It's going to send out little tiny purple shoots out of it. And then that time of year, so those purple shoots right down the stem that we're after. If you ever notice you throw old vegetables into chickens, you'll notice they always peck the stem out. And that was one thing I noticed. And these stems are packed full of nutrients. Small purple shoots are going to be great. But in winter, this is the kind of food we need.